I'm 43 years old and I'm living in downtown Brooklyn. And I'm rehearsing in a play called Passages. It's about life and death. And it was created by this actress living in downtown Brooklyn, Cynthia Belgrave. And we were in the middle of the rehearsals at this gorgeous church, St. Anne's Church with the big stained glass windows. It was on Montague Street. They used to have the best entertainers come to this place and rock the joint. It was a great place to perform. So right in the middle of rehearsals, I get a long distance phone call from my mom. See, my mom and dad decided to retire, at least in the winter months, from Manchester, New Hampshire, to Miami Beach. So mom is calling me from Miami, and she's telling me that daddy is in ICU, and he has pneumonia and water on the lung, and the doctor feels, we better come now. So I hang up from my mom and I go, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I, I just felt torn. So I called Cynthia and I told her what had happened. And she was so wonderful. She said to me, look, Sherry, you've gotta go and you'll know what you need to do when you get down there. So I go fly down there the next day with my love, Michael. But I decide to go alone. And I walk into ICU. I don't know if you guys have ever been into ICU, but the people in there are pretty critical. They're all hooked up to machines. They can't do anything. Some of them never leave and then some of them get better. And so I walked into my dad's room and it was shocking. Cause if you knew daddy before this happened, he was in his seventies, but he never looked old. He never acted old. He was full of love. He was full of life. He was amazing. And there he was it, laying in bed. He was awake, but he was hooked up to all of these wires, to these machines. And then over in the corner, I see my family, my mom, my sister, and my brother-in-law, pure terror. And my mom never worked. She played canasta and mahjong. And my sister was in HR at University of New Hampshire. And then my brother-in-law had all sorts of jobs and then somehow would get money through my sister from my dad. And then there was I, considered, I guess, the free spirit who wanted to go off to New York City. And I was never really supported. They were never excited about anything that I would do. And so I just walked into the room and I took a chair and I sat next to daddy. Meanwhile, what's going on? I hear my mother go, Harold, do you need any water? Daddy can't answer. And then my brother-in-law, can I get you some ice? And they're yelling. And my sister said, daddy, can we get you anything? Daddy can't say anything. And it's like, I know they're doing this because they're terrified. So I opened my dad's hand and I had brought this white and black smooth moonstone rock with me. You see at home, uh, I'm not only a New York City book publicist, but I'm an alternative healer. And I love collecting rocks, um, healing rocks and jewelry and all sorts of stuff. And even before this all happened, I happened to be in a shop 
and I got, I saw this Moonstone Rock and I just fell in love with it. I was just gonna buy it for me. So when this thing happened with daddy, I figured, oh, let me bring it down for him. So while I was sitting next to him, I put the, the little rock in his hand and I closed his hand and I didn't care if I ever saw it again. I just brought it there for love and healing. So in ICU, you're only allowed a, a short amount of time, maybe 15 minutes and the 15 minutes were up. And the nurse came in and told everybody that they had to leave. And so everybody gets up and I still sit next to daddy. And my mom looks at me and she said, Sherry, we have to go. And I said, no, I'm staying. So my family was kind of shocked and they went into the waiting room and I take the chair and I pull it and I put it halfway in the doorway outside and halfway in daddy's room. I must have stayed there for maybe an hour. I was meditating. I was just sending prayers and love and healing. I just wanted to be around my daddy because I love him so much. And then I left. The next morning, we come into his room and the doctor's there. And he tells us, that daddy is doing so much better. He has improved dramatically. Oh my God. And I asked the doctor, is it okay if I go back to New York City because I'm rehearsing in a play? And he said, yes, it's fine. You can go back. Wow. So I fly back and we continue the um, a play and the rehearsals for passages about life and death. And then after the first performance, we have questions and answer. And wouldn't you know, somebody in the audience asked me, did I ever have to deal with somebody who was dying or close to death? And I share the story. You can't make these things up. I share the story about what happened in the middle of rehearsals. And I also shared with the audience that that was the first time I realized that I could be present and I could be there for somebody who was either sick or in a crisis because it was not about me. It was all about them. And I was totally present. As it turned out, daddy did die nine months later. But what a gift I received during that experience when he was in the hospital, close to death the first time. And it was like, I got this message from him saying, Sherry, no matter what, always shine your light. Shine your light. Thank you. Mm -hmm.